Alrighty everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be comparing the Google Pixel 8 to the iPhone 15 Plus. Comparing statistically the most important features for your everyday consumer, like your camera, battery life, storage, and a secret final feature I wanted to cover that a lot of people still don't really understand too well. Um, but in this comparison, we're going to be giving a tally point to each uh, category to see who will do win in this comparison. So let's just get into it. So we're going to start with the Google Pixel. So for the Google Pixel, the first feature we're going to start with is the battery life. So the Google Pixel does start with a 4500 milliamp battery. So you're asking, what does that mean? Uh, honestly, nothing. That doesn't really mean anything because numbers are just numbers. Let's talk about how it works. So the Google Pixel's battery is adaptive. So it does learn um, based on your usage and adapts to that. So at certain points in the day, if you're loading specific apps or you have like full brightness during the earlier parts of the day and then later in the day, you will do lower brightness, it learns from that and it kind of um, allocates more battery life for earlier in the day versus later in the day. Now, another thing I like about the Google Pixel is it does tell you when the phone will die based off of your usage. So for example, say it's like 8 a.m., you just got up, you can unplug your phone, swipe down, and at the top you'll see um, your battery percentage, and next to that is say until 9 p.m., for example. So that means the phone will be good until 9 p.m. Now, the more you use it, obviously the lower it's going to get. But based off of that, I think that's really convenient. You know, you're going to have expectations of how, phone, uh, how long the phone is going to last you for, you know. So you can prepare, bring a portable charger, or if you're working, you know, you'll just hook it up, charge it. So I think that's a really cool feature that the Pixel has that the iPhone 15 Plus does not. And that would be nice for Apple to add, honestly. It, it's such a simple feature, but it's, it's really convenient. Um, now with the Pixel, I wanted to give a use case, um, a personal use case. So the first day I ended up getting it, I wanted to watch my brother stream on Twitch. So I pulled it up. Um, I had about 60% battery life on it. And I started watching full brightness. I just left it on. I didn't charge it at all. At the end of the day, he was still streaming. So about eight hours of the day and I still had about 10% of a full brightness on the single charge out of the box. Now when I compare that to my iPhone 15 Plus, uh, so this one does start with a 4300 milliamp battery, so slightly smaller, even though the phone itself is bigger. But my personal use case at work, if I ever do something like that, where I watch my brother stream and he's streaming for that long, my phone will not be alive. Honestly, there's no way. My phone will die within probably about five hours if I had it the same way I had the Google Pixel. So in comparison, I, I, I just I can't give I can't give iPhone this point. This one has to go to the Google Pixel. Now, when we talk about what it supports charging wise, that's going to go Apple's way. Um, it, it just, it can't be a comparison. So for their wired charging, I've heard that you can do up to a hundred watt. Personally, I've never tried it. It doesn't really make sense to charge that fast. Maybe a 65 watt charger at most, but personally I use 30 watt. So if I compare my 30 watt charging from my iPhone 15 plus, Compared to the Google Pixel, the iPhone's going to win this point for charging supported. And even the wireless charging in comparison, there's no comparison. iPhone has MagSafe, Google Pixel, 
is compatible with MagSafe, but you do need like special hardware like a case or uh, like a magnetic ring attachment. We're not doing all that. And just in just the base comparison, iPhone's going to win the charging battle. So that's one point 15 plus one point to the Google Pixel. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about was the display. So we have a 6.7 inch display on the 15 plus in comparison to the 6.2 inch display on the Google Pixel 8. Now display wise, in size, obviously the 15 plus would win. Um, if it was a more fair comparison, it would be the base model 15, which is 6.1. So that's a little bit more fair. Um, but for quality, that is gonna have to go to the Google Pixel. The reason why is it because it supports 120 refresh rate. So swiping through the screen is extraordinarily smooth. It is unbelievable how smooth everything moves. When you're swiping uh, through apps, either through the home screen, whatever it is, it's, a, it's amazing. Chef's kiss, honestly. Now it is a 1080p HD display, so it's not going to be the clearest in that aspect uh, when we compare to the iPhone 15. That one does have a 1290 display. So clarity wise, it's going to go iPhone's way, but now the refresh rate makes the Google Pixel a lot, a lot better, honestly. So it's going to be 2-1 for in favor of the Pixel. We need some work, Apple. Now let's talk about some storage options because the Google Pixel is quite limited when it comes to storage options. Um, you have option of two different storages. 128 or 256 for the Google Pixel. In comparison to the iPhone 15 Plus, we have three options. 128, the starting, 256, or 512. So for storage, it's going to go Apple's way. Um, they just offer another storage model. Now, if you were to get the base model, 128, and need additional storage on top of that, it's still going Apple's way, honestly. Their cloud-based storage is, is unmatched right now, uh, even compared to Google's cloud-based storage, you have Google Photo, it's it's not a comparison. The way Apple's uh, Google, excuse me, Apple's cloud-based storage works, it's just, it. it's amazing. It's like a dollar for 100 gigs, so you basically double up your phone. It, it's a good alternative if you didn't end up getting the upgraded storage model. Now, for my favorite, favorite part of the video, we're going to be talking about how the SIM cards work on these phones. So for the Google Pixel, you have two options. You can do physical SIM or electronic SIM. Now, you can do both at the same time, or you can do two electronic SIMs at the same time and still get the same effect versus the iPhone 15 Plus. It is limited to electronic SIM only. So no, no physical SIMs for the 15s, nor the 14s. That's something that they started with the 14s. So for that, I do have to go in favor of the Google Pixel again. Now, if you have an unlocked Google Pixel, that means you are able to use any carrier in the entire world with no issue. In comparison to the 15 Plus, it is the same way where you can use any carrier, but you have to do it electronically. Not all the carriers around the world still uh, support electronic SIM at this time. So you're limited, not super limited, where it's bare bone, but you're going to miss out on some of the good options where they don't support electronic SIM yet. Uh, when we compare that to the Pixel, where you could just pop in the SIM card and then you're up and running, 
that's way more convenient. The conveniency of physical sim outweighs Apple's 15, where it's it's only electronic. Now that it has its own conveniency at the same time. Um, it does allow you to store multiple profiles. So if you do have multiple carriers or multiple phone numbers that you use, you can have them all on the same phone without having to switch SIM cards. So it does have its pl uh, pros and cons, but for the SIMs itself, it's in the favor of Google Pixel. Now talking about the SIM profiles, the Google Pixel can store up to seven, between five and seven, just depending. Um, versus Apple's iPhone 15 Plus that can hold eight. So it's only about three to one difference um, when you compare it to the Pixel. But the Pixel having a physical SIM to me outweighs all of that. Because you have the option for both. You can do seven eSIM profiles on the Pixel and then one physical that matches uh, the iPhone's eight. So comparison wise, that's that's going in Pixel's favor. I just I, I can't give Apple the point for that. Now in this comparison, we see that Google Pixel won the most of the points. But leave a comment saying which one you prefer more.